Let's go over the titration curve for a weak acid with a strong base. And for our example, let's take acetic acid and sodium hydroxide. So this is what the titration curve looks like. Our experimental setup is to have sodium hydroxide in a burette. And our acid, which is going to be acetic acid, in a beaker. And we'll be dribbling the sodium hydroxide into the acid solution. Our equations, well, let's first let's look at structures. Acetic acid, you may see it written this way, where this is the ionizable proton, or better yet, we'll use this structure, where the three CH bonds are there, and the carboxyl group looks like this, and this is the ionizable proton. CH bonds are too strong to ionize into solution. No ionization. Same with C double bond O's. It's the OH bond that actually ionizes here. Sometimes you see acetic acid written this way, HAC, where AC stands for acetate, which is this. It's after the acetic acid is ionized. Let's write some ionization equations. The molecular equation would be acetic acid plus the base we're using, sodium hydroxide. Everything is molecules. Completion reaction for neutralization. And we always get a salt plus water in any type of neutralization reaction. So the H and the OH come together to form water. We'll put it over here. And then the Na actually replaces the hydrogen and forms an ionic compound with the acetate. So we get this. So there's our reactants and products. For the complete ionic reaction, we have to write everything that's 100% ionized as ions. But acetic acid, being a weak acid, alone in aqueous solution, undergoes this equilibrium dissociation. It lies to the left. So this acetic acid solution mainly consists of just acetic acid unionized in tiny amounts of the two products. So when we write the complete ionic equation, because the vast majority of acetic acid exists as unionized molecules in that complete ionic equation, we write the acetic acid molecule as a molecule. And then since sodium hydroxide is an ionic compound, metal plus nonmetal, it is totally ionized in solution. We get this sodium acetate, but this is an ionic compound as well because we have a metal and a nonmetal here. We have to show it as ionized and then water, which mainly exists as a molecule in solution. You probably remember the auto ionization of water is this. The Kw is 10 to the negative 14. Okay, so there's very, very tiny amounts of protons and hydroxide ions in solution. Water mainly exists as molecule, so we have to write it as a molecule. To get the net ionic equation, we compare the two sides and we cancel out spectator ions, ions that are not involved in forming a new product. That's going to be the sodium ion. So our net ionic equation is CH3COOH plus hydroxide forming HOH plus acetate. Here is the neutralization curve, plotting pH versus volume of sodium hydroxide added in mils. Point A is the initial pH. We're going to explore each of these in more detail. B, which is after the initial pH and before the equivalence point, we could call this the 
buffer region, buffering region. C is the equivalence point. That's where the moles of NaOH added from the burette is equal to the moles of acetic acid initially in the beaker. And after the equivalence point, that region is called the end point. So let's look at this initial pH region right here. This is where we just have acetic acid in a beaker and no base has been added. So this point A is when we've had zero mils of NaOH added. We simply have acetic acid in a beaker. So the acetic acid in water is going to ionize through its equilibrium to form acetate and hydrogen ions. This solution contains three substances, acetic acid, acetate, and protons. They're all in solution together. But because the Ka of this is around 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth, the equilibrium lies to the left. And this solution mainly consists of acetic acid and minor or small amounts of the products acetate and protons. So at point A here, mainly unionized acetic acid molecules. Let's go to point B here. After the equivalence, pardon me, after the initial pH and before the equivalence point, we call this the buffer region. To understand this, we have to look at the neutralization reaction. Acetic acid plus NaOH, those two sodium acetate and water. So we're adding, say, X moles of sodium hydroxide. X moles of NaOH convert X moles of acetic acid to X moles of acetate. So we add X moles of sodium hydroxide, we get X moles of acetate, which is going to be ionized in solution. And we have some amount here, some initial amount, maybe 0.1 moles, whatever that is. But be, because we're before the equivalence point, we haven't added enough sodium hydroxide to neutralize all the acid. We have acetic acid left, left over. But because we've added sodium hydroxide, we've converted some of the acetic acid to acetate. And we, so we formed a fair amount of acetate. So we have both the weak acid and its conjugate base in solution. This weak acid is going to ionize according to its well-known ionization equation. We have a lot of this stuff left. We formed a fair amount of acetate. At this initial condition, we have large amounts of acid and conjugate, ba conjugate base present. We have both components needed for a buffer. And we solve the Ka expression. We use henderson hosbach to get the pH of this solution here. Okay, so in region B, we have a lot of acid left. And we've formed a lot of conjugate base. That's why we have a buffered system. And as we add sodium hydroxide, the pH increases very slowly because when we add sodium hydroxide, it's neutralized by the amount of acid that we have left. And the pH, pH creeps up very slowly. Let's go on now to the equivalence point. 
which is right here, at the equivalence point, the, the moles of acetic acid in the beaker to begin with is equal to the moles of sodium hydroxide added. So when we look at our neutralization reaction, Say, for example, we had 0.1 moles of acetic acid, so we've added 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide. They've totally reacted with each other. None of the reactants are left. We only have this product mixture remaining. And because we had 0.1 moles of acetic acid and it all converted to product, we're going to have 0.1 moles of sodium acetate. Another way of looking at it, we've added 0.1 moles of sodium hydroxide. 0.1 moles of NaOH converted, 0.1 moles of acetic acid, 0.1 moles of sodium acetate. So now we have a solution of sodium acetate in water. But sodium acetate is an ionic compound. So it's going to rapidly ionize to give this conjugate base. plus NaOH in aqueous solution. And this is the major species that we have at the equivalence point. At the equivalence point, the major species in solution is acetate because all the acetic acid was converted to acetate. Now, if you remember back to one of our previous chapters, if we have a salt of a weak acid in water, or if we have a large amount of conjugate base in water, it can hydrolyze in water through an equilibrium to back form the acid and hydroxide. So this large amount of acetate is going to react with water through a base hydrolysis reaction to produce acetic acid and hydroxide. That extra hydroxide is the reason why the pH at the equivalence point is closer to 9 rather than 7. At the equivalence point, we have extra hydroxide left over. That's going to boost the pH at the equivalence point to around 9, between 8 and 9, usually. Okay. So if we look at this equation here, we have a large amount of this acetate. All the acetic acid was converted to acetate. If we wanted the Kb for this reaction, Kb would be 10 to the negative 14 over Ka. The Ka for acetic acid is 1.8 times 10 to the negative fifth. This is around 10 to the negative 9. This Kb is, is very tiny, so it lies way to the left, meaning that we lose very tiny amounts of the acetate when it forms acetic acid and hydroxide. This equivalence point solution mainly consists of acetate, okay, with minor amounts of acetic acid and hydroxide. And once we go beyond the equivalence point, the NaOH from the burette is the dominant species in solution. The amount we're adding from the burette is far higher than the amount of hydroxide that we get from the hydrolysis of acetate. So we can ignore, we can ignore this reaction right here. Okay. So summarizing, initially the major species before any base is added is the unionized acetic acid with minor amounts of H plus in acetate. The buffering region after the initial pH and before the equivalence point, we have that neutralization reaction where the NaOH converts some of the acetic acid to acetate. So we still have acetic acid left, 
but some of it has been converted to acetate. So in this buffering region, we have large amounts of acetic acid and acetate. And the minor species here is going to be protons H+. At the equivalence point, all of the acid and base have been converted to products, sodium acetate, which ionizes according to hydrolysis reaction to form acetic acid and hydroxide. But the major species in solution is that acetate, minor amounts of these two products. And after the equivalence point, this endpoint region here, the NaOH and hydroxide dominate. We still have a lot of acetate around since all the acetic acid was converted to acetate. And we have tiny amounts of acetic acid. I hope that helps.